Hello everyone, I'm Brian. Today I'm reacting to Do All Religions Lead to the Same God? So, this was, this was a request. If you have a request, please leave the name of the title of the video, the channel, and the link. That way I can search for it. If you leave the link, it might be put for help for review. I'm not sure. But just to be safe, you know, type it out. Or copy and paste. So, as far as I can tell, this is going to be based on the, I guess, a Hindu's perspective. And going through what I know about it, I have a feeling it's going to be yes. Because at least as far as I've learned from Hinduism is um, <clears throat> everything is Brahman. Now this is the thing I'm kind of a little confused about. I don't know. Some make it seem like Brahman is a, a type of God. and But the type of God is you in a sense or everyone is Brahman which is one and everything so I've, I've, I've heard a little bit about Brahman I just it's just still a little, a little confusing to me I'm, I'm pretty sure it's probably quite complicated but let's put it this way everything is Brahman and how we how Hind, how I think Hinduism points to this is the fact that we we all see our own personal gods in a sense and Hinduism as far as I can remember I don't know if it's again I don't know if it's all of them or it's particular sects of Hinduism or or what it is but there are like 330 gods because <clears throat> everyone creates their own god and this god is not the real god but it is a path towards Brahman so basically you see this god as in a sense a reflection of yourself and hopefully by seeing this God, you see through the Maya to start seeing Brahman itself. Whether you need a God or not, it's all up to the individual. But getting to see a God is a path to Brahman. So I would say in terms of Hinduism, I, I do believe they will say yes. Because again, uh, 330 million gods and counting and how maybe even other religions can be included into Hinduism because of the sure fact that you know instead of instead of 330 million gods it's all of them are focusing on one god and Hinduism will say yes that's absolutely true that god is part of Brahman as well because everyone progress to get to Brahman in different paths whether it's through atheism or theist but that's my theory. Let's go ahead and get started. I'll talk too much. Right now. There's no CC, by the way. Sir, oh, um, never mind, there is. The, uh, Rama is Sri Ram Krishna. He even practiced Christianity and Islam and said they lead to the same destination. How can this be true as their perception of spiritual living is vastly different from the Hindu pathway? Yes. Like like heaven and hell in contrast to reincarnation. You see, one of the features about Sri Ramakrishna is, he, he, first of all, the reason why I love him is another reason why it's a comprehensive vision of Hinduism. Every avatar will promote, say, Vaishnavism or Shaivism, etc. This individual came, first of all, to see if there's a reconciliation between different pathways the Hindus, Hindus have adopted to make spiritual progress. So he tried Vaishnava tradition, he tried the Shaiva tradition, the Shakta tradition, he tried every aspect or every different path of making spiritual progress within Hinduism. And the, the wonderful thing is, he is such a powerful, dynamic personality. He was successful in every path we tried. So he said, all these pathways lead to the same destination. <laughs> so far, so good. Only reconcile the Hindu vision. He said, no, he's a greedy fellow. He said, no, I want to see if this perception that I have about ultimate reality can be checked out using other religious traditions. And this is a fantastic thing. First time an individual, not able to verify various Hindu movements and reconcile them, he said, I want to try various religions. And the two religions he tried out is Christianity and Islam. These are the two major religions. He said, let me try Christianity, see if it takes me to the same destination. Let me try Islam as well, whether it takes me to the same destination. And he succeeded. And this is, he said, ultimate reality that I experience is same whether I'm using Christianity, Islam or Hindu, any of the Hindu movements. Now people say, Mr. Lakhani, but that is a bit weird because you see the, the theology of Christianity or Islam is this two-life scenario. 
this life and the never, never, you know, everlasting life as in heaven or hell. So how can this man with reincarnation of Hindus? So how can you say that same? Then, well, I have kind of figured in the sense it is. Uh, I guess the one way how I would explain it, at least I don't know if it's true. Again, and this is this is only based on what I know so far, is that there is in a sense a heaven and hell, being constantly reincarnated on Earth. The ultimate, I, I do, I think, if I'm correct, the ultimate path to Hinduism is to not be reincarnated anymore. Uh, this is what's said by Sadhguru. He comes to realization. He he no longer wishes to be reborn which was a, a bit saddening even though i don't believe in reincarnation it's just uh, hey look man if it's true i want him to come back he's desperately needed and the world is desperately needing wise people like him but anyways so the ultimate goal is to merge with brahman i believe and to no longer be reincarnated and and if you don't achieve that you're gonna you're gonna be reincarnated into this world um and, and I do believe it's dealing with karma as well, as far as I can remember. And the, the better karma you have, the more elevated you become, and hopefully to a point where you become, well, um, enlightened. Otherwise, you're constantly living in this... It's, uh, hell is a bit of a harsh term, but in a sense, this hell. He never said they are saying. He said, they lead me to the same destination. You say, but how can you, re Mr. Lakani, how do you reconcile? This is how I reconcile. If a person is genuinely spiritually oriented, he will basically talk about the spiritual experience he had. The doctrines that surround that spiritual experience are kind of produced by theologians, not by the master. The theologians get around and say, oh, this is what he meant. So even this idea of two life scenario you see in Christianity was something that Christ didn't promote. But the theologians who are kind of, you know, the, the father of Christianity said, okay, this is the best way to keep our flock in line so they don't jump, they don't sit on the fence, be careful, either heaven or hell, carrot and stick, so let's plug it in. So the theologians in all these Abrahamic traditions have put in their own version regarding the spiritual experience of their master. The masters are right. Ramakrishna has tried out and it works. But the theology that goes round with these various kind of religions are seriously flawed. I'm saying it bluntly flawed. Even within certain Hindu movements, some of the theology that goes with it is flawed. And yet the, the masters who kind of, whether it's uh, Ramanaji Acharya or Shankaracharya, the rest destination is the same. That is why this wonderful reconciliation we see with Sri Ramakrishna gives dignity and acceptability to all world tradition, not only Hindu traditions, in the genuine manner. He said, I see the same, fine, at the final level, I see the same destination. You see, because when I talk about pluralism, it's many way to be, ways to be spiritual, including many different religious pathways. People say, Mr. Lakani, how do you know? Because maybe this is called relativism, it's anything goes, you're promoting anything goes. We never said that, <laughs> because the destination is same. Who says it? Any textbook? No. One individual. In the history of humanity, there's only one individual who claims, not just because you read a book, he's you know, negotiating their theology, he's actually experienced at the final level that he reaches when he uses any of the pathways is the same. Because one, like, one kind of challenge they throw in my face is this. Could we use this example in pluralism saying that it's like climbing up the mountain using different pathways. So Christianity goes one way up, Islam goes the other way up, Hinduism goes the other way up. So they say maybe it's climb, using different pathways to go to the top of the mountain. But the, 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 the challenge I get, I love this kind of challenges from the atheists and from people who want to target me, they say Mr. Lakani, how do you know it's the same mountain they're climbing? Maybe they're climbing different mountains. What's the proof? It's a very serious challenge. The only proof, the only way it's the same mountain is this one man in the history of humanity saying the same mountain is Ramakrishna. So it, in a way, gives rubber stamp to the idea of pluralism. No other, no other prophet, ancient or modern, come anywhere, comes anywhere near giving this such wonderful way of reconciling various religious pathways of Hindus as well as other pathways used by other prophets. First person in the history of humanity. That's why I told you, he said, Avatar Ishtai. So, how can we be sure that we are all going on the same mountain or different mountains? He just explained that, but I guess he wants to kind of clarify that, which, I mean, this is still a very good argument. I mean, one person, do you. <sighs> this is kind of hard. Um, so. Sadhguru was saying that our our five senses is not 
perfect. I, so far, I think he's maybe the only one that said that, as, as far as I can, as far as I've experienced. <clears throat> and I do agree with him to a degree. I mean, we, we can't say that our our five senses are completely, you know, crap. I mean, they work so far, you know. But you know, you can't entirely necessarily depend on them all the time, and that's why we must rely on other people's five senses as well to collaborate certain things like for example if I say this is a pen right here you can look at it and I say oh this is a pen he said do you see a pen and you and however many people viewed us if they all said yes then for the most part we can say this is in fact a pen but if I say this is a pen I said I see a pen here do you see a pen if ev anyone says there is a pen here I think we all need glasses <laughs> But I see a pen nonetheless. But if if no one else confirms that there's a pen here, there might be an issue with my five senses of seeing a pen here. So, and again, that, that goes with the unreliability of our senses. Sometimes there are people who see things from the corner of their eyes, even though it's not there. They smell things, they feel a touch. Our senses are not exactly perfect, but reliable to a degree. And we must confirm with each other that something is true but he's so far he's saying only one person has ever done that how do we know that his senses are working perfectly and so we need other people that can kind of confirm that but I mean that's again something that's kind of this is the reason why I, we can't necessarily how do I explain this um, this is kind of my also part of my argument for uh, non-duality in a sense as well because I do agree with a lot of what they say about experiencing it yourself absolutely agree with that but the only way we can experience things is through our five senses and our five senses is not always perfect there can they can be unreliable so to say the only way you can ever experience something is through your own personal experience, through your own five senses, which your five senses are imperfect. I don't know. <laughs> That's just my theory. So I'm kind of curious how it's going to say that. Yeah, how are we? How do we know that all the religions are climbing the same mountain, just in the different sides of the mountains? Different world. No, we can unless you become Ram Krishna, you can't verify it. The only thing, the only person who's given this rubber stamp is the same mountain is is Ram Krishna. Because theologically or intellectually, you can say no, they are different mountains. How do you know? They seem to be talking a different thing altogether. But the only way, person who can say no, no, same mountain. I'm telling you, even though they say this is the scenario, this is the scenario, destination is the same. Is this Ram Krishna? Uh, once you said that uh, when you go higher and you see uh, people of other tradition, you feel more affinity with them. Can is I, that a proof? Yes, that's the proof. Wonderful thing is this. I said it at one of these Christian meetings. They said, Mr. Lakan, tell us about pluralism. I said, one of the beautiful kind of examples I can use, this is not Ramkar, this is me, a little tiddler. I said, one of the tiddler is, the example is this. Suppose you're in a circle and you're trying to reach the center. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know when you compare our directions of reaching the center, all the directions are different. You think plural, this means Relativism, anything goes. All of us will have different directions to follow to reach the center. So even though we're using different compasses, different ways to reach the center, the, the result is going to be the same center. But you say, how can you be sure? And one of the beautiful things I just made up sure. for fun. I said, if you are sincere about your own tradition and progress to the towards center promoted by your tradition, and somebody next to you is also using his own prescription, different direction to reach the center, as we get closer to the center, somehow, by natural, we feel affinity for each other. We don't feel it. I know it is using a different angle. That I can agree with, absolutely. I mean, most... Uh, I mean, again, I didn't really study up necessarily too much in religion. I, I do know some bits of it. Even though I kind of wanted to. Most religions nowadays teach peace and teach to love one another, which is a great thing. And in the past, it's all about, you know, this is the only religion and blasphemy to those who don't believe in it. But all of them are, in a sense, pointing the same direction. All of them are trying to, uh, how to say, be a good citizen in their religion so they can go to heaven which is essentially most religions main goal the only 
tarnish to the goal uh, to the religion is the fact that when they say I'm, our religion is the only real religion, every other religion is false, or you're a blasphemer, or to force other people to believe in religion, or to use fear to uh, convert people into your religion. Again, not all religions do this. There are some that did, especially in the past. That was that was the time when fear was everywhere and everyone just spreading it. But luckily enough, today in modern times, it's not as bad as the past. It's still out there. It's still very much in the shadows or in poor countries. But at least, hopefully, and most of I do believe in most religions are teaching to peace and to be compassionate and to show them the way. Whether it's the right way, I don't know. We just feel comfortable with it. We just come closer together as we reach the center. Well, if we move away from the center, we are at logarithm with the people sitting next to us. This is the proof of, in a very lovely way of saying, <clears throat> this is an intellectual gymnastic to suggest the same destination. But the Ramakrishna is not intellectual gymnastic, it's experience, it's a genuine experience. Oh, good. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I mean, I, I do believe... If they didn't have this, you know, my religion is the right religion type thing, I think it's they all just seek to be peaceful and to better themselves and, in a sense, be like one with God, I suppose. It's kind of funny. It is very similar to much of uh, Hindu uh, Hinduism. I don't want to say it's a religion, because it, it is, and then it isn't. It's a way of life also, so it's it's a bit confusing on what I want to call it. I want to call it a way of life, but there are maybe some religious aspects to it. So I, I know there's a couple of philosophers... Okay, I'm talking too much. So, but yeah, uh, genuinely I do believe all religions tend to point in the same direction. They all want to have peace and love with everyone. I do believe they all want to be one with God. I mean, that's Hinduism as well. And but you know we all they have this tarnished um, things in the book where people have written that said that you know I this is the one true religion kill all others or all others are um, blasphemers don't believe in them or convert everyone to our religion kind of crazy I, I I know we're mostly past that and I know there are still some around the world somewhere that are still enforcing the old ways anyways that's my reaction to all do all religions lead to the same god if you like my content please consider subscribing thumbs up thumbs down down below thanks for watching i'll see you in the next vid